Good evening and welcome. Tonight we're going to be going over a brief history and geography of Samoa. So I have us started way zoomed out so you can get a good idea of where Samoa is located. Um, so over here we can see the North Island of New Zealand. There's the capital Auckland. Over here you can see Australia, the cat or Brisbane, the capital Canberra is. Oh, not you can't see it. Brisbane's up there. We can see Papua New Guinea, Indonesia over there. So here is where Samoa is located. And let me actually zoom you in now, now that you have a good idea of where Samoa is. You can see it says the Samoa Islands. So there are two different Samoas. We're going to talk about just Samoa today. But these islands over here are American Samoa and they are part of the United States of America, whereas Samoa is an independent country. Now, this line you see going through here is the international date line. So, American Samoa and Samoa are in two different days. Very interesting, even though they're so close together. We'll talk about that a little bit in its history. Let me zoom you in a bit more. Should say to Samoa. Let me see. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> so, Samoa, you can see, consists of these two large islands. This one is called Savai, and this one is called Upolu. The capital city of Apia is located here on Upolu. There are actually two more smaller inhabited islands right between them. Sure, right there. They're so tiny. Uh, this one is called Manono. As you can see, it's it's very small. Um, there are no roads or streets or anything, so cars are banned. Also, horses and dogs are banned on this island. Uh, and there's an even smaller island right over next to it called Apolima. It's very teeny tiny. You can only get there by boat. Uh, it has a population of 75. It only has one village, so it's, it's a little one. Um, these are massive compared to those islands. Uh, much bigger populations. You can see all these little towns and cities on the coast. Of course, being in Polynesia, Samoa has absolutely beautiful beaches, but they're pretty much all privately owned. Um, let's see. And it's also very, very mountainous, as you can imagine, being in Polynesia. It has a very tropical climate, very moist. They have a long, rainy season. And of course, it's very forested. They have wonderful, lush rainforests, lots of beautiful rivers and little lakes. And they are volcanic islands. Um, but all the volcanoes on these islands are no longer active except for one. It would be this one. This is Mount Matawanu, and um, it had a really interesting eruption the last time it erupted. It erupted from 1905 to 1911, just consistently, and the lava flow that came from that actually added to the coastline up here. It added like 20 square miles of land on the coast up here. Um, and the highest point is right over here. It is Mount Sili Sili which actually means highest. Very clever. So, um, it just being these little islands here, there's not much else to say in terms of physical geography. Um, like I said, there's lots of forests, but 80% of them have disappeared once the land started being developed for towns and cities and for farming as well but it's still very beautiful. I don't have any books or anything to show you guys about it, but I'm sure you can imagine everyone knows what like tropical South Pacific islands are like. So beautiful. So let's talk about the history of Samoa. People have been living on Samoa for a long, long time. The oldest human remains found came from between 2,900 to 3,500 years ago. And these islands were settled by the Lapita people, who explored all through the, um, the South Pacific and settled on many different islands. 
and they didn't have any kind of writing. All of their stories, legends, history is told um, through oral traditions and dances, things like that. Um, but some of that ancient culture is still preserved today in the form of the Fa'amatai, which is their version of like a tribal leadership, but it's a really interesting one. Um, basically, everyone, every native Samoan is part of a royal family to some extent. Uh, there are many different positions in the lineage of the families and everyone has a place. So everyone's part of the royal families or the Tama'a Aiga. There are four different Tama'a Aiga. They are the Maliatoa, Tupua Tama Sese, Mata Afa, and Tui Melia Liufano. These families have been uh, mostly the Maliatoa and the Tupua Tama Sese families were the main ones um, in charge of the islands. The last two I mentioned rose to prominence um, much later in their history. Uh, but those families have always been here ruling Samoa. They've had some really interesting legends of queens and kings ruling the islands. Yeah, really, really cool. Maybe someday I can get into more of the details of their legends and things like that. But in 1768, the French explorer Bougainville um, named these the Navigator Islands when he sighted them. And starting in the 1820s, uh, different ships, like trading ships and whaling ships, would stop off on Samoa to um, reload, basically, to get water and food, uh, get wood, supplies, anything like that. They would also um, manage to get some Samoans on their ships to um, help them out. And in 1830, the first Christian missionaries came to Samoa to spread and teach their religion, and that really went off really well. Um, today, Christianity is the official religion of Samoa. And there were three main superpowers that were keeping their eyes on these islands. The first one was Germany. They set up um, quite a few little processing areas for coconuts and cocoa beans. The second was the Americans. They actually laid claim to the islands over here. And um, yeah, those are they're still part of America today. Um, and the British, from what I can tell and what I researched, never really officially owned any companies or buildings on Samoa. It was just in the scope of their influence. They had control of other islands nearby, um, for example, Tonga, which we're going to talk about next in my series. Um, but th they just kind of had their eyes on the area. So, 1886. Um, the current king, Maliatoa Laupapa, was usurped um, and exiled, and I believe he was usurped by his premier, who was Maliatoa Mata'afa Yosefo. Um, the Germans um, got behind the current Tamasese leader um, and figured if they supported him and he took over, they could expand their empire further. The Americans sent warships over just to keep an eye on things, make sure it didn't get too intense. Uh, but there was a German attack on a Mata'afa rebel village, which damaged American property. The Mata'afa replied by um, basically ransacking some German plantations. And war started. Uh, the, the British started to get involved, um, kind of like I said before, to protect their prospects. And it became just like a three-way civil war between three major superpowers allied with various groups on the islands. It started to come to a head when in Apia Bay major warships from Germany, the United States, and Great Britain arrived ready for an all-out battle, but on March 15th, 1889, a huge storm blew in and it destroyed all the warships. So, um, they came to an agreement just to reinstate um, Lao Papa and um, just, like, I guess pretend that nothing happened. Uh, but in 1898, Malitoa Lao Papa died, and um, Mata'afa Yosefo returned from exile, ready to 
you know, take control. Um, the British and the U.S. Navy came in to support Lao Pepe's son, um, Prince Tanu, to put him on the throne. Um, and of course, the Germans backed um, Iosefo, thinking that, you know, they could form an alliance, create a little piece of their empire. This one actually did go into an all-out huge battle, uh, the biggest one being at the Siege of Apia, which was a big, long battle. Um, and in March of 1899, they held the Tripartite Convention of 1899 in order to end it with diplomacy instead of warfare. And they came to the agreement that the Germans could rule over these islands and the Americans could rule over these islands. And they split them officially. So these islands became German Samoa, and the Germans ruled the islands from 1900 to 1914. And the big thing that the Germans implemented was they got rid of the whole concept of a king or any kind of tribal leader whatsoever. The Germans wanted to be 100% in control of all the goings on on the islands, politically and economically and so on and so forth. However, World War One was right around the corner, and not long after it started, on August 29th, 1914, New Zealand came in and took over the islands and gained control of them um, in place of Great Britain, just kind of helping them out. New Zealand held control of Samoa until 1962. Two major events happened in the course of New Zealand taking control. Let me put this down. In 1918, the influenza epidemic was sweeping across the world, but Samoa, being little islands in the South Pacific, were untouched until um, a New Zealand ship docked in the harbor in 1918, and the influenza spread throughout the islands. It killed a fifth of the population, completely devastated. It was 90% of Samoans were infected. Um, and like 10% of the island's children were wiped out. It was completely devastating. And you can imagine in our current age what that horror must have been like. Um, also, the Mao movement had formed in 1900. They were a peaceful protest organization that was formed to demonstrate against the Germans. And they were still um, in control. Not really in control. They were still um, doing their thing when the New Zealand government took over. And they held many peaceful protests over, you know, the, the New Zealanders being responsible for destroying the population like that. And in 1929, during one particular protest, which is known as Black Saturday on Samoa, the New Zealand soldiers fired into the crowd trying to disperse them, and it got completely out of hand. And um, 10 people were killed and 50 were injured during that day. So those are the, the big stains in New Zealand's control in Samoa. They passed the Western Samoa Act of 1961 that granted Samoa its independence. They called themselves Western Samoa at that point to differentiate them from American Samoa. And um, they became part of the Commonwealth, so technically a part of Great Britain, but not really kind of in their sphere of influence. Samoa's made quite a few little changes to how things are ran on the island throughout the years. Like in July 1997, they changed their name from Western Samoa to just Samoa. Um, they changed what side of the road they drive on, so they did drive on the right. They changed it to the left to stay in line with other Commonwealth nations. Um, and then they changed the time zone, like I said in the beginning. They were UTC negative 11. They changed to UTC plus 13, so that's quite a, a jump in time. And in order to implement this, they had to completely skip December 30th, 2011. So that date did not exist on Samoa. Um, they also added to their constitution that Christianity was the state religion. Just little big changes, I suppose you would call them. And to put a bow on that little part of history, in 2002, New Zealand did issue a formal apology to Samoa for the influenza spread and for the Black Saturday massacre. So everything's all good now. 
at least for now. And in a nutshell, that is the history and geography of Samoa. And that's all I really have for you tonight. Someday we'll come back to these islands and go a little bit more in depth, but for tonight, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video relaxing and educational. I hope you learned something really cool tonight. I know I did. And I hope that you have a very good, 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 good,